I'm a merchant marine. I've been selling 15 years. I graduated from the Paul Hall Maritime Center out of Piney Point, Maryland. I primarily sell on container ships, tankers, drill ships, military cargo vessels, you name it, I can sell on it. My selling capacity of Bosun, I hold the title as AB Unlimited. That primarily sell deep sea and coastal, meaning up and down the coast, west coast, east coast, and deep sea is out deep sea across to uh, other continents. What led me to the flat earth was actually uh, my sister. We've always been into the conspiracies and the 9-11 and Sandy Hook and all that stuff. And uh, one day she said, hey, you want to see a conspiracy, you should look into the flat earth. And I, I looked at her and laughed because I had seen the videos come up in the feed and they showed that disc thing in the space and I laughed at it, and <laughs> whatever. And she showed it to me and I laughed at her. And I went and pulled out my phone and I looked up a video, you can look it up, it's called Dragon Link FPV to Space. And what you'll see is basically an RC airplane that's been taken up about 80,000 feet and they release it and then the airplane comes down with power and it has the drive link system which is capable of making control and video. Anyways, and but they had a GoPro so you see this curved globe and you know that said it for me when I saw that I was like oh wow look at that so I brought that down to her she put it right in her face and said look at that and I looking back I remember her smile on it was like you know okay she wasn't gonna argue with me she said okay later on I don't know a couple days later whenever I seen it in there and I said all right I had nothing to watch I hit it on the YouTube and I knew within 10 minutes of it I, I forget which one it was I think it was probably uh, one of the documentaries but it was almost like I instantly knew and then what happened was is a lot of the proofs that I had were before I was a flat earther such as seeing contacts at 30 miles out with the naked eye on the horizon which is impossible on the globe model so much so it was me the third officer and the lookout we were standing our watch and we were i believe we were in the mediterranean sea look out looking looking watch i say okay we got a contact out there we look and we look and we try and get it on the radar we get it at 30 miles out when the chief mate came up, we had told him, hey mate, we got a contact earlier 30 miles out. He said, bull crap, I don't believe you. And we all looked at each other and shook our heads and said, yeah, yep, yeah, they got it. We He stormed off the bridge, ran down, came back up. He had the Bowditch, which is a green, thick green book that's everything you ever need to know about being on the ocean, sailing, navigation, everything. And he comes up and he says, the math doesn't lie. And he slams down this piece of paper and he says, our bridge height is at 100 feet versus how far, 30 miles. It should have been behind like 600 foot of curve. I remember 600 and something foot. He had all the mathematical course. I didn't know, you know, okay, that's good. All right, he must know what he's talking about. But we're looking like, well, I don't know. We got it on the radar. Then the radar must not know what it's doing. Also radar. Radar works in straight lines. The radar is incapable of curving around a curve, picking up and bouncing back the reflection of what it's picking up. So if you can imagine a ship on the other side of the curve, we'll say 30 miles, 40 miles out, it sends out the radar beam. The radar beam is supposedly curving around this ball, bouncing back and then bouncing the reflection curving back around to be picked up by the radar. That's not happening. It's flying out straight, and when it picks up something, it hits it back. It's not going around any curve. That's that's plain and simple. That can be looked up on your YouTube and see how radar waves work. They don't go around the curve. Every diagram shown will show you straight lines. They don't they don't show you curved lines. I'd like to point out that I see now that I, I didn't see before is that you have a magnetic compass and you have a gyro on any ship. And I'm not talking about your little crabber men show fishing boat, what are they, the deadliest cat. I'm talking about a real deep sea going, unlimited tonnage boat. It's gonna have a gyro. And it is a big, huge box that sits behind, usually behind the bridge or in the chart room. It's a big box and it's basically the gyro compass. Now, if you had two models, I guess, wouldn't you have to have one making the corrections because it almost never matches the 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 magnetic almost never matches the uh, gyro. It's very rare that we're steering the same course. And they say it's due to deviation and variation 
is where you, you know, like the metals of the ship causes it to, to differ. And then you have the variation of the magnetic fields over the earth is, I guess they change, you know, true north and magnetic north. But the way I look at it is, man, they got two different machines. One is a machine and one is from God. The, the way to get around the earth. God's not a dummy. He put the way to get around the earth with the compasses. If back in the day they had motorized vessels that can get them around, they would probably have got around a lot better. But they were at the mercy of the wind. People were like, oh, they didn't know their way or, you know, they were using the stars and stuff. And they, you know, so I just believe that the two compasses, the gyro compass that's electronic and then our regular compass is because they are switching the ways, you know, the maps. There's two different ways to get around the earth. They're tricking us. Going uh, on one ship, on a military ship, and this is with uh, a night vision goggles, 50 miles. And these guys were on the bow. They were not even on the bridge where you'd be a hundred foot up. They were on the bow, which is barely probably 40 feet off the off the water's edge. So these guys, and they, and they have the latest state of the art. This was in 2015. 2015, they had state of the art, what do they call night vision goggles. So these things are capable of seeing that far if we live on a plane, you can't deny it. It was, uh, it was so obvious, but not to everyone else. I guess the program is harder than other people. So they don't want to hear it, but over the years, I have learned the model. I know the model like the back of my hand. I can show proofs. I, I have ammo now. So when I go out there and I tell somebody, hey, that's impossible, you know, and I'm talking to a, a third mate or a second mate who's an officer who went to college, meaning they paid for their education. Because when you pay for your education and you're making a handsome salary on it, you can't be wrong. How could I be wrong? I'm making a salary. They're paying me. I paid for this career. Everything's working great in my life you are obviously wrong all the math works so with that you know it's it's hard but when you stump them and you start showing them stuff it's hard for them to say and then they start saying stuff like oh well what does it matter anyways i don't also tell mates about the they lay down and we use all our charting is done on flat maps straight lines they never draw a curve line every line is straight 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 lines straight lines everywhere we go on a flat map and i try to point it out to them and what they tell me is, Mr. Marcator has put all that in there for you. It's all equated in there for you. You don't have to worry about it. All the curvature calculations for it and everything's figured right into the, uh, the map. So the straight lines and everything are actually bending somehow. I don't know. So these are just the proofs that I see. Along with, you can see the capuscular rays are much betterly observed out at sea because you can, there's, it's nothing, it's like a desert. And so you can see the sun like a flashlight just shining down in a cone everywhere. If there's a little bit of a clouds are right, it looks like a cone. And I point it out all the time to these guys. And I get them thinking, but you know, the programming goes hard on, on, on people. And uh, if you're not ready to wake up, well, you're not ready to wake up. You'll just have one foot in, one foot out. You'll be back in the illusion before you know it.